how to play frontline, what to do, where to go, what to play, why do I have to play frontline, who are you and who am I? Those are the questions I am getting asked a lot lately because yesterday a World of Tanks released frontline game mode once again. Community's favorite game mode called Frontline is back in action with a bang, I have to add, because I think if I remember, I have never ever seen messages like this. Error. Action unavailable. The queue for this game mode seems to be full at the moment. Please try again later. We had over 2000 people in queue. And if you look at the top left, you can see total players, 165,000 players were online at the same time on the EU server, and I actually saw close to 170,000 people at max on the EU server, but guys, keep in mind, on the top of that we have NA server, we have Asia server, and the biggest server, RU, usually has a triple the amount of players the EU server has, so we most definitely had over half a million people people playing this game at the same time across the world yesterday with uh, the release of the frontline i think we can call it frontline 2.0 even though in the game in the game mode itself not too many things were balanced there were a couple things map positions and uh, build boxes for example were tuned a bit but i covered uh, that topic in my previous frontline introduction episode already uh, the biggest changes are that now you can actually brush these up and uh, this game mode is available for one week every single month uh, for 10 weeks total and the rewards are quite impressive yes indeed but as always nothing comes free to be able to get some of those juicy rewards at the very top you have to spend the most valuable currency you have time and you have to spend a lot of it because you have to brush these up quite a few times to get to the tier 9 secret vehicle or the tier 8 uh, Emil 1951 special bank. Or if you are after for some free premium vehicles, uh, then go ahead, uh, playing couple battles, uh, couple battles every single day, uh, trying to brush these up. Uh, after like 10 months, you should be able to get at least one tier 8 premium vehicle, which is super super awesome. But more about the rewards in a second, because as I said before, I have received so many questions in the game under my comment section and some emails as well actually, where you guys keep and keep asking me uh, what to do in this game mode, how to play, which tanks are the best vehicles and, and so on. So in today's episode I try to cover all that and even more. This is my how to frontline episode for you, hopefully this is going to be helpful for at least some of you. And guys, I have to say sorry, not sorry, for not being super active lately, because yesterday, I think uh, my previous video was released uh, three days ago. Usually you do not see that on my channel, I like to take one day off every once in a while, I try to upload almost daily episodes, but lately I have not been super active over here. But here is one really special reason for that. Super epic hyper special reason for that. More about that special reason maybe in my tomorrow's episode, so guys, please stay tuned. Yeah. Anyway, moving on with the episode. And I think uh, let's get the biggest question out of the way right away. And the question is, of course, which tanks are the best in the frontline game mode? The main question is actually not how to play it or what should I do. The main question is, which tanks are the best for the frontline game mode? Well, there is one easy answer and not so easy answer to that. Easy answer is uh, Progetto 46 and Go Russian. Because going Russian in this game is never wrong, guys. And that is it. Progetto 46 or Go Russian and you are going to win. <laughs> okay, there are many many more vehicles besides uh, Soviet vehicles or Progetto 46 that are really really good for this game mode. I am going to mention some of those tanks in a second as well, but yeah, this was my short answer. Now the long answer is, um, at first, uh, try to figure out why are you playing this game mode over random battles or over any other game mode. If you're playing it for fun, then obviously pick your favorite tank in this game, which you enjoy the most. Like, if you try to have some fun, 
Yeah, play with fun vehicles. Or is it for credits? Are you playing this game mode to grind a lot of credits? Which most likely is the most common reason why people are playing frontline game mode. And next to those, some of those reports as well, Wargaming decided to add at this time. Which is actually my main reason as well why I'm playing this game mode to grind a lot of credits and to see result screens like this. Yeah, not bad, or like this, over 427,000 credits profit from one single frontline battle. And my record at the moment is close to 460,000 credits profit, even though I used quite a few primo rounds at the end of the battle. So I think hitting 500,000 credits profit shouldn't be too hard in this game mode. You just have to look out for a couple things, for example, do not fire too many primo rounds, which is actually quite easy, this is a full team rate battle, you do not need to use uh, too many premium rounds, if any. I try to limit them to 5% guys, yeah, that magical 5%, actually even under 5%. Uh, I always forget to do that, but I really should remove every single premium ammunition from my vehicle, so I do not get too tempted. Although having like up to 5 premium rounds is still okay, because sometimes maybe you need those rounds to turn around the battle, just to make it 100% penetration. And of course you have to know weak spots as well if you are not carrying any premium rounds whatsoever. So this is one way how to maximize your profit, how to maximize your credit income in this game mode if you are doing it for credits. And the second uh, quick tip is uh, try to use small first aid kit, small repair kit. If you are not uh, like drowning into the large repair kits and uh, large med kits, I am not and I actually had one really painful battle. In one super quick defeat where enemy tanks were completely dominating us while they were attacking, I made 270,000 credits in total. But my profit was only 60,000, and do you know why, guys? I used quite a few different vehicles in that battle, and every single vehicle had large repair kit activated. And I didn't know that I ran out of those large repair kits, and I spent 160,000 credits on consumables in one frontline battle. 160 freaking thousand credits on consumables. So just a fair warning, just a friendly warning uh, to save some more credits, uh, to maximize your credit income if you are playing this game mode for credits. And if you are doing it for credits, then of course guys, pick premium tanks. If you have many premium tanks, if you are able to choose, then I would really recommend uh, D54 first prototype, uh, D44 100, uh, or any other Russian tank. Uh, I think Defender is actually working better, a lot better on this mode than IS-3A, even though at the moment on the background I am playing with IS-3A. In this battle I was actually testing out different loadouts, different vehicles, and if you are playing with IS-3A, I really do recommend you to use Inspire that uh, reserve I am using as well, because it makes your vehicle a lot, a lot better. I am using it on almost every single vehicle, on almost every single vehicle class, on some tank destroyers I am doing it, on light tanks, on medium tanks, on heavy tanks, uh, especially folks like IS-3A with that auto reloading gun system is getting super, super huge advantage uh, using Inspire because it makes your reload time better and if you are able to load in uh, your free shells faster then you are going to win and you are going to dominate as simple as it is but on the top of that on the top of IS-3A on the top of Defender what else I recommend using LT-432 Black Bulldog of course uh, Scorpion G is really good at uh, defending and attacking as well if you have someone who is able to spot uh, Action X of course Somua M is one of the hidden gems, I would really say so. Uh, so more and with some extra frontal armor, that auto uh, loader gun is able to do so much dirty work, so much work, so much damage, is able to save the games even, is able to save a lot of capture zones. So so more M, really awesome recommendation. Uh, Brochetto 46, will I cover that at the start of the episode, it might be one of the best uh, tanks to use in this game mode. 
simply because it has that firepower, it has that mobility, it has that gun handling, it has everything you need pretty much in a full tier 8 battle. Uh, guys, keep in mind, this is a full tier 8 battle. Uh, of course, uh, Centurion 5-1 in some hull down positions. Uh, hull down tanks are always really, really good, especially when you are defending. So uh, use uh, Centurion 5-1. Same goes to the uh, what is the Swedish version, uh, Primo Victoria or Primo Victoria? Yes, uh, Super Bershing uh, up updated or upgraded super bershing is really enjoyable su-130 pm same goes to the scorpion g uh, that i mentioned before and one of my favorite tanks to use in this game mode is actually on the background at the moment this this is one of my favorite uh, i do not have brochetto 46 sadly so i'm not able to use it i would use it as well but not too often because it kind of gets boring to use the same vehicle over and over again so i try to mix uh, up um, my my godlike loadout at the moment is Lorraine for the team, LT-432, D-44-100, IS-3A, uh, D-54 first prototype. I would really love to add the Somo SM and Progetto into my dream loadout as well, but at the moment I do not have Somo SM or Progetto 46, so I am not able to use it, but I really do recommend those tanks. So, all in all, pick the best premium tanks in this game at the moment. If you're able to choose between different premium tanks, uh, play with your favorite one, where you feel the most uh, comfortable in and that fits with your playstyle. Yeah, it can it can even be a tank destroyer. Uh, previously, when Frontline game mode was open, I played with one battle with SDRVS1. It wasn't the most interesting battle, but I was able to get close to 20,000 damage in one battle. And of course, I would have been able to achieve the general state is like three times over with uh, that kind of battle actually two times over i think uh, but uh, just pick your freaking favorite tank and you are going to be happy you are going to make a lot of a lot of credits now if you do not have too many premium tanks let's say only one then play with uh, that one and only premium tank and after you die in that vehicle your reserve could be something uh, hard hitting like ISU-152 or Rain Metal Porsche, some some hard-hitting tank destroyers, for example. Uh, those can be kind of decent uh, damage makers and credit makers as well, while your premium tank is down, out of action. Uh, if you have at least one. But if you do not have one, then just play it for credits or play it for experience. So there is another way or there is another reason why people are playing frontline game mode. They are playing it to grind out different tanks. This is extremely good game mode for that to grind out some tier 9 vehicles. For example, I, I am still grinding towards a standard P with my P44 Pantera. So every once in a while, if I feel like grinding some experience towards it, I am going to jump into B44 and that is it. It is, once again, it is really good game mode to get a lot of experience in. If you get one good battle in one of your tier 8 vehicles, you can get up to like 10,000 experience easily. So, all in all, try to figure out why are you playing this game mode, are you doing it for fun, then play with your favorite vehicles, are you doing it for credits, then try to maximize your credits, and uh, try to play with premium vehicles, if you have any. And, oh, by the way, I almost forgot one kinda hidden gem. It is super situational, tier 8 premium tank destroyer, but if it works out, it can be godlike. Yag Tiger 8.8, .8, because you can boost that TPM over 3000 easily, 3400 it should be quite easily achievable for the Octagor 8.8. Um, it is situational, as I said it. I recommend you to set it up and test it out. Maybe it works for you in some situations at least. And finally, if you are playing this game mode to grind out other tier 9 vehicles, then of course play with uh, some tier 8 vehicles where you need some experience. But which tanks should I use when I'm attacking or defending? Well, all those rules apply to both situations. While you're attacking or defending, play with your favorite vehicles, play with the best premium tanks and so on. Uh, but sometimes it is situational. For example, when I'm attacking, I find myself playing with uh, light tanks a lot more. I actually really enjoy uh, light tanks in this game mode. LT-432 special, a black bulldog, some M41D in the action, medium tanks, aggressive medium tanks. 
tanks like T-54 Mod 1, T-44 100, Procetto 46, while defending Gunnarvan Action X, the Defender, all the Haldan Kings are really, really good. The VK-100 1P is actually a really good defending tank as well. Quite a tough nut to crack, I have to say, but at the same time you might say it is super big, sluggish, easy target, yes, but if people are not using premium rounds, it is not easy tank to penetrate, and what you do not understand or what most of the players do not see is that VK likes are eating so many reserves, so many artilleries, airstrikes and so on. Those guys are really hard to penetrate and artist strike usually doesn't deal over 100 damage. There was one battle where I saw our VK who ate 6 or 7 enemy artist strikes and every single artist strike did 100 damage tops. So, enemy tanks used 7, 6 or 7 artillery strikes on that same VK. Meanwhile, me and all the other teammates were able to chill, were able to relax, we didn't have to worry about too many RT strikes anymore. So, VK is doing some dirty work on the background that is not showing up on the, on the scoreboard. But once again, it is situational. And so, while I'm attacking, as I said, I like to use aggressive tanks, aggressive strong tanks. Um, Scorpion G, really good attacker, in my opinion if used correctly you have to keep some distance with the enemies but um, if used correctly you can do so much work in scorpion g same goes to the su-130 pm uh, so regular tanks talking about the regular tanks really good defending tank destroyers like isu-152 rhine metal porsche uh, IS-3, of course, attacking, aggression, a really good defender is Caravan, aka Carnarvan, or whatever it is, uh, so some Haldan vehicles, of course, really good at defending, and by the way, uh, this, oh my god, this is so painful to watch, I forgot to switch back from my premium rounds, guys, I switched to the premium rounds at the start of the clip while I was fighting versus that ISM, but I forgot to switch back, and over here, I am literally spamming it, because I am thinking I'm using standard A rounds. I'm literally f uh, wasting freaking thousands and thousands of credits. I would never normally do it. I would never spam premium rounds like that on the move without even aiming sometimes. Yeah, especially while I'm trying to make credits in this game mode. Oh boy, Lorraine 40 t tank that I cannot penetrate without premium rounds, most definitely. Nice tracking shot and into the pooper, one of the weakest armors in the game and I'm still firing premium rounds. Yeah, at least that shot got me to the general rank. Not bad, not bad at all. And now I finally saw I was using premium rounds the entire time. I was so freaking mad. But moving on with the video, next topic, reserves. Which reserves should I use on my light tank, on my medium tank, on my heavy tank, tank destroyer and so on. So at the moment we have air strike, that plane strike, we have artillery strike, we have engineering that makes your capping speed faster, we have inspire that makes your crew better, that inspires your teammates as well uh, around you in a tiny circle, we have a smoke and we have recon. Now in the video you saw my old setup with smoke, at the moment I am using inspire, I am using recon and artillery strike, uh, because inspire in my opinion is one of the best, uh, if not the best reserves in the game at the moment, uh, recon just to spot, just to make uh, some camping tank destroyers move, it is so funny when you see uh, a lot of stacked uh, last known position vehicles together, and if you recon that area, you see they are going to move like ants, like little, little and like something spotted them and they're trying to get away they're crashing into each other uh, epic traffic jam and so on it is quite funny actually and i try to use artist strike as strategically as possible i am not only going to focus on my own flank if i see that my artist strike is off cooldown i am quite quickly going to take a look at what is going on on other flanks as well if i can hit multiple targets if i am able to defend any zones maybe enemies attacking while we are defending Ending, like um, our uh, sector is uh, secured but enemies capping B then of course I try to help out B with my artist strike as well so I try to be as um, effective with it as possible uh, but this is just one of my light tank setups uh, for example mm. 
where is my black bulldog over here i am using a bit different setup i'm using artist strike then air strike and inspire once again over here i'm not using recon this is just uh, my non-recon setup at the moment on d54 inspire a really awesome skill to have is3a inspire really awesome skill to have on medium tanks, I think Inspire or Art Strike is the best on tank destroyers. Uh, I don't know, dude. Um, now, where Recon really comes in handy on a tank destroyer is, uh, let's say, I'm defending one position, I'm camping up on the hill, I know where enemies are coming from. Using Recon, I can spot them before they are able to see me. You know that you can see further than you can spot, so if I can spot them outside from a spotting range, I'm able to get free damage easily. Uh, so, on issue one 30 p.m. I am using that recon and on my scorpion G. They are kind of similar. I am using um, Inspire just to boost my DPM a lot, a lot more and artist strike as well. On my Lorraine, I'm using Inspire once again. On Somo SM, I think I would maybe even use Inspire as well uh, if I have it. Uh, what else interesting over here? M41D has. One interesting setup, Artist Strike Recon and Smokescreen, this is kind of my uh, capping setup. At the moment I think for me, my perfect uh, cap rush setup with ELC even 90, maybe or with M41D, uh, would be maxed out engineering, maxed out Smokescreen, because you can actually make the iteration better, and the Recon Flight as well. Why not Inspire instead of Recon, you might ask? Well, engineering makes capping faster, smoke, I'm able to hide inside the smoke, and usually, when I use Recon, I spot the enemy tanks, and when they get spotted, they kinda, like, start moving. You know, they they lose uh, their thought, they, they try to get away. Uh, if they see that sixth sense I can pop up, they kinda, like, lose their heads, and this is... This is why I think this is a bit more useful than the Inspire. But this this would be good on ELC even 90 or M41D, for example. Uh, so, what else interesting rewards? Uh, well, I covered that in my previous episode. I tried to get this unique turn and vehicle. I have no idea what this uh, vehicle is at the moment. The rumors are maybe SU 12254 is coming back into the game. Maybe that the tier 9 Chinese tank destroyer is coming back into the game. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, of course, I'm after for some bonds as well. Some gold? Is it gold? Yes. Medals. Bonds. And the toast prices can be another reason why to play this game mode actually. To get free tier 8 premium tank like SDA2 or WZ111, you should be able to get at least one of those vehicles eventually if you play a couple battles every single day or every other day. SDA2 should be quite easily achievable and this could be your first ever free tier 8 premium tank in this game. That makes you a lot more credits. So, ladies and gents, this was my how to frontline guide, like quick guide, uh, what to do, how to play, which vehicles are good, hull down tanks are really good, Action X is really good, this one is really good as well, actually, Rebel Loris, uh, I actually haven't even set it up. But I really would avoid Series C, so my SM is good, T-34, if it is one of your only uh, tier 8 premium heavies, then go for it, but otherwise it is just slow, not the best, the Patriot is really good, uh, Chrysler K is really good, um, T-92 not so much, SU good, 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 uh, IS-6 in this mode not so good, KV-5 not so good, Defender, or maybe actually IS-6 might work out as well. I have to test it out. Uh, this one good. Uh, oof, I really do not like it. Not not so much. Yak Tiger. Just uh, check this DPM, guys. 3,300 easily without brothers in arms and food. Easy DPM. Factory. Good. This one. M6 Mutant. Buffed M6 Mutant can actually work out. I have to test it out. Maybe with some Inspire action like that uh, really good black bulldog like all the meta ranks at the moment this one ah, it is situational once again situational good good well kinda okay yeah okay ish really good rock edition we have so many good premium tanks t34 
tier 8 premium tanks so pick make your pick and make a lot of credits rebel Oris as well for some of you maybe so i hope it was informative maybe even helpful a little for if, if 10 people got some new information out of it if uh, my today's video helped at least 10 people then my job is done over here i hope you enjoyed it i catch you next time with something else stay awesome guys i love you all take care and bye